Hi, everybody. I'm Barbara Ham Lee. Conventional wisdom says we gain 7 to 10 pounds between Halloween and the new year. But is that really true? Are there ways to avoid weight gain yet still enjoy the many holiday activities that all seem to involve food? Is there another way besides eating carrot sticks while everyone else dines on calorie-laden goodies? Joining us on today's Another View on Health, fitness guru Melody Dowdy and cardiologist Dr. Keith Newby. And both will share ways to navigate the holiday without gaining the dreadful holiday 10. Another view on health is next, so please stay tuned. Discussing today's topics from an African-American perspective, this is Another View. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Another View. I'm Barbara Ham Lee. Tis the season. How many holiday parties have you attended already? How about those holiday cookies in the office? Eggnog, the adult kind? Buffalo wings, fried appetizers, even that dreaded fruitcake has tons of calories. So what's a person to do to avoid the holiday 10, that weight gain many of us encounter this time of year? Here with some tips on staying svelte while partying hardy is Melody Dowdy a health and fitness guru with Norfolk State University and uh, Tidewater Community College. How you doing, Melody? Good afternoon. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. How are you? I'm and well. our favorite cardiologist and co-host of Another View on Health, Dr. Keith Newby. Hi. How are you? It's been a minute. It's been a minute. <laughs> I thought you were trying to tell me something. No, I'm not trying to I was tell starting you anything. My feelings were getting hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, before we get into our conversation, I just want to remind folks that um, a week from today, Next Friday, the 15th of December, is the last day to sign up for the Affordable Care Act. If you need insurance, you need to get busy and make this happen in this next week. And there is some help from you. Enroll Fest is happening. Celebrate Healthcare at the, and this is the Mega Holiday Healthcare Insurance Enrollment, Enroll Fest and Gift Bazaar. How about that? It's today, December the 8th from 3 to 6. Saturday, December the 9th from 10 a.m. until 5 p.m and Sunday, December the 10th from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the Hampton Roads Convention Center on Coliseum Drive in Hampton. Um, to, uh, Virginia Governor Terry McAuliffe will be there on Saturday. Come out, sit down with a um, health care person to help them help you sign up and make sure that you take care of that. So don't wait until the last minute. If you have any questions, you can dial 757-287-0277. That's 757 757- to eight seven zero two seven seven or you can go to celebratehealthcare.net. That's celebratehealthcare.net. Keith. One one quick uh, comment about the Affordable Care Act. I think that uh, I'd like the listeners to hear. You know, we know all the political um, ramifications going on, especially with this uh, tax bill that came out. And I just want people to understand that the Affordable Care Act, regardless of whether or not you believe it or not, is the law of the land. And the concern that I have had is I'm looking at, I want people to make sure they understand. You may have heard this time or two, but just so people really do understand with this tax bill, getting away from that mandate, what that does. When you hear the term that it's going to make health care costs rise, I want people to understand quickly what this is all about. You have a group of people. Let's just say we had 100 people in, in the United States and, and you know, you're looking at, say, 90 percent of those people are healthy, 10 percent are unhealthy. The mandate, the reason they put that in there is because if you, in order to keep health insurance costs low, you have to have healthy people and more of them offsetting the unhealthy people right. so that the actual costs you're paying are down. They're actually robbing Peter to pay Paul. You got the 90 people in there, they're doing really well, and they're paying out premiums. That, that money is those covering 10%. those 10% of people who are unhealthy. <laughs> you get rid of the mandate. This is just a, a kind of a backward way of trying to make the affordable CAC fail so they can get rid of it. But the bottom line is um, this is the law of the land. This is what we have. And, and what we should be doing is supporting it by keeping the healthy people in this plan so that it makes everybody benefit you know, by keeping those costs down. So please everybody. And I'm, this is not partisan. This is just my view of it based on data. Make sure you keep in touch with your, um, your congressman and 
what have you that you're saying, listen, you know, we're not necessarily agreeing with this because this will impact in a negative way because it's going to hurt you individually because exactly. your costs are going to go. They will go up. I'm letting you know that there ain't going to be in question about it because if people drop out who otherwise would be covering the, the health, the unhealthy people, what's going to happen? The costs are going to go up money coming in is going down insurance carriers are not going to lose but so much money in this deal trust me they're going to pimp this system to make sure they're making out and we're going to be the ones losing so make sure you're getting out supporting this venture understand the affordable care in totality before you start making too many judgments. Absolutely. And uh, if you need help enrolling, again, the Mega um, Enroll Fest is happening today, Saturday and Sunday uh, at the Hampton Roads Convention Center. So if you want more information, call 287-0277. And, bef- and one other thing before we get to our weight loss, which sure. we're really excited about because everybody <laughs> I've been running into all week is going, I can't wait to hear what I need to do. But I want to ask you, um, there were some new guidelines, yes. uh, Dr. New that came out regarding blood pressure. Yes. And I know that that's something very near and yes. dear to your yeah, heart always. as a cardiologist. Yeah, so can you explain to us um, what those changes are and, and you know, what yes. your thoughts are about it? Well, just so people understand that, uh, and, a patient, and whoever's listening out there to the patients of mine, you know I've been hammering about this for a while anyway <laughs> in terms of the um, blood pressure reading that we sh- are shooting for. Uh, and I get a lot of people who say they come in with a pressure 150 over 90 and they'll come up with these comments. Well, that's good for me. And I tell you, that's not good for anybody. Just be clear. The reason why these numbers are in existence is because what we have found data wise c- occurs as a result down the road. Uh, these new guidelines just recently came out of saying that the target number to be shooting for is 130 over 80 or less is the target number. You know, it used to be what was deemed, you know, they took out some of the uh, prior notions of prehypertension, hypertension. They just called it now hypertension one, hypertension two, based on the number. And the new guidelines are dictating 130 over 80 or less. Um, and they're focusing on lifestyle changes for those people that are in this borderline kind of uh, category. If you're 140 uh, top number or 90 on the bottom number or greater than the recommended medication. But if you're between 130 and 140 or your bottom number between 80 and 90, they're recommending lifestyle changes initially, which means it segues way into what we're talking about today. Um, and, uh, the, and, and it really does make a difference diet and exercise. You'd be surprised how much that can impact on lowering blood pressures without medication, but trying to get people to do it yet. Another story, <laughs> but to recap 130 over 80 or less is the new guidelines. There are, and the reason that being blood pressure problems are associated with, with stroke, heart attack and kidney failure. Yeah. And those are the big three. And we have found, I mean, when I hear stroke alert at Norfolk Journal, and if I'm called into a case, I can guarantee you the majority of those people, their blood pressures are typically between 135 and 150 is the top number. The bottom number is between 80 and 90. That's what I see. So suppose your top number is okay, um, 120, yeah. 130, but your bottom number is Same higher. difference. Same so, difference. So you still Either need one. to, it yeah, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Either okay. or, then you you know, they go through these, um, <laughs> these uh, interesting transitions every few years where i mean when i was first coming through medicine many moons ago the top number didn't matter as much as the bottom number did and then a few years mm-hmm. later they came back and said no no that's the opposite and then they came back and said both numbers matter then they came back again and said no it's the top number and then they came back again and said the <laughs> bottom number I, I tell you what you'll find is both matter they okay. both do um you know and that's why now they're can really you remind us what each number means okay. what the top, the top number, means number is the one means. Uh, look at it like this the top number is is your systolic blood pressure the bottom number is your diastolic now systolic is when the heart pumps okay. it's pumping a bolus of blood out of the heart into the main aorta so you get a certain pressure reading as the blood is being pushed into this big tube that number of the pressure that's generated to push blood down that tube is your top number. Okay. When the bolus of blood travels downstream, then there's a certain amount of inherent pressure that's still in the artery as it relaxes as that bolus of blood is passed through. And that is the bottom number of the diastolic blood pressure. So uh, either one is creating tension, um, arterial in tension, you know, and on the heart because the heart has to pump, get it through this tube. So it's going it, to, and that's why I tell people when you talk about the heart enlarging or getting thickened, that happens um, for several reasons. But as it relates to blood pressure, the harder the heart has to work to pump blood in this tube, the thicker it's going to become, which can lead to heart failure, 
can lead to uh, heart rhythm disturbances, and can lead to stroke and other uh, manifestations. So um, a lot of people, the, 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 what I'm finding is a lot of people have this fake idea that uh, if they um, are feeling fine, they therefore are fine, and, and you hear that a lot, and people say, well, I feel great. I'm like, that's... But that's why that's they call it nothing, the silent yeah, exactly. disease, Exactly, right? that's, that's yeah. why they call it silent killer, because yeah. it can take you away from here. And it's and it's it's a slow process that you don't want to deal with, and because uh, it can cause some major major issues for people down the road. So the guidelines they they're making them more stringent because they they you know they recognize these stroke risk and these kidney failure risk. And you know I'm gonna tell you when you really think about talking about cost of healthcare, the way the way they're looking at all this is if we can prevent the illness in the first place or at least prevent the complications, you know, that's going to help everybody. And if, if everybody pitches in on this, you know, it really, I mean, cause and to be honest with you, I know I'll get beat up for saying this, but I'm almost feel like everybody should have health insurance. Everybody. I'm a hundred percent for, I'm, I'm not a big fan of saying just one payer system period. I think people should have choices, but we need to have a payer system there because if you have nothing, you know, that's not helping anything. And unfortunately, so if everybody was, you think about it, we got, I don't know how many millions of people we have in the U S but if every individual had health insurance, every last one, think about, you know, that the majority of these people are going to be healthy. So you would talk about your premiums could be as low as, you know, fifty dollars a month or a hundred dollars a month if everybody had it. But because they don't, here here hence we are in the situation we are. Here we are again. Yeah. So let's talk about uh, the holidays. <laughs> I know, after all, the, after all the depressing comments so I just exactly. made. <laughs> Let's talk about having, going to those holiday parties yeah. and eggnog and, and all the high calorie <laughs> all stuff. All the high calorie yeah. stuff. So, Melody, you know, first of all, is do we walk into the holidays just saying, look, I'm going to gain weight, I'm not going to worry about it? Or should we really try to stick with what we've been doing all along? It all depends what you've been doing all along. I mean, I think we need to be mindful of what, what we eat. Cause, um, and then I think that's it. You don't want to just go ahead and binge eat because that caused, because as Dr. Newby said, some, some people are one pound away from a heart attack, one pound away from being diabetic. Well, I'm pining away from being, having a um, stroke. So is that extra blog of gravy worth it? <laughs> you know. So, so they say, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, some, 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 some say, well. So then, so can, can we say, can we work out to eat? Yeah. So if we know that we're really going to go in on dinner, can we, like, go work out 30, 40 minutes and walk the neighborhood? So that we would feel not as guilty. Yeah. Not as it's guilty. almost kind of like a mindset because I think people's holiday stuff starts right at Thanksgiving and it goes yeah. all the way to New Year's. But well, they really say they say between Halloween yeah. actually yeah. and, and New maybe. Year's. Right. Um, yeah, but I know for sure. Yeah, yeah, but I know for sure. Um, you know, the Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving time, yes. right? Probably a week before Thanksgiving for sure. And until January 2nd, you know, <laughs> it's not even like a in between and people's okay, I'm going to take a break between Thanksgiving and Christmas. I mean, they're like, they go for it the whole time. And it does impact on that blood pressure significantly. Um, and I'll make one comment about that just so people understand the, the recommendation, especially if you have hypertension is you post your, your sodium intake should be about two grams or maybe max 2,500 milligrams of sodium or less a day. That's total. A Old teaspoon day. of salt is 2,300. So is, that's it. Yeah, that's it. I mean, that is it, it, it. I mean, to, to stay healthy and keep your pressure controlled, there is data out there that says a teaspoon of salt. If you were, and I don't know how people did this, but anyway, there was, and I remember I was preparing for a hypertension talk several years ago, and I ran across this study where they did this. I mean, I just shook my head, but they took it, uh, it was like 100 people, and they had them eat a teaspoon of salt. Ooh, how did and they even I know, that's, that's what I said. And they drank a, uh, like a, I think it was like maybe 32 ounces of water behind it and they checked their blood pressure baseline and two hours after that, there was a 40 point increase oh, wow. on average uh, wow. two hours after taking that teaspoon of salt. 40 points. So you were, you were 120 at baseline, you went to 160 mm. on average. Well, you know, it's interesting because I have stopped um, at all. I don't even look at the salt shaker. Yeah anymore unless something is really not tasty 
um, to me. Other than that, it you know it tastes pretty salt, salty. I'm a big pepper eater, yeah, but yeah. not um, the, but not so much salt. But the, I mean, is that one way to, to well, help? There's, there's one help way. Get the, there? the problem with some of that though is that unfortunately, so if you're not watching mindful of the labels of the foods that you're eating, they may have about six grams of salt in there already. Right. I mean, you know, that's right. the downside. I mean, the, I mean, what sells in the United States is butter, fat. <laughs> and salt. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you think about it, you go to most. Yeah, good. I mean, it's unfortunately that's what sells, and, and you know that's what gives flavor to, to food that people want to taste. Mm -hmm. The downside is that we pay a price for it. Mm -hmm. So I mean, but that's I think you know it boils down to that trying to keep that sodium content low, and sometimes negotiate with yourself to say, okay, I'm gonna take a break between this date and this date. Now Christmas Day, I'm gonna have X. And you'd be surprised that what you may that, that what happens is as you keep continue to eat more and more, you can eat more and more. But if you were to take a break, breather and say, "Okay, I'm going to cut back between Thanksgiving and say the week of Christmas," you'd be surprised. You'll try to eat a lot, but you won't be able to. You won't be you, able to get down. Yeah, you won't. Yeah. So you know that's. <laughs> but if you're constantly eating, <laughs> and you could. It's almost like your stomach grows and grows. Is preparing for you. It is waiting for you to put more in it. <laughs> You know, and, and the more you put in it, the worse situations will so become. So, Melody, if you're not a a diet, I mean, a uh, exercise person already, um, obviously, I don't think you're going to really start this time of the year. And so, what I mean, are there some small things though that we can do to just kind of keep the metabolism going? I think there is. I think we could um, do dancing. I I was thinking, you know, when you, uh, Christmas time come, everyone goes out and clean the house up for company uh -huh. so i was thinking why not put some of those favorite tunes on and then during the break have a that's a um, great idea dance doing um color rug or two and you yeah. burn calories that way mm -hmm. so if you really think about it if you do or, or while you're vacuuming right. while you're cleaning turn the music right. on and just kind of get into right. it right so if you do four or five songs you you did cardio for 20 minutes and 20 to 30 minutes you can burn dancing 200 to almost 300 calories oh, okay. excessively so technically you um burnt off that one egg knob <laughs> one egg pour egg knob in a glass and just look how thick that stuff is that tells you all you need to know right there <laughs> that one egg. you add the bourbon to it <laughs> that's, that, and i google that that's 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 406 calories yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so that's 10 hours of dancing. Well, it's, a, it's, it's about 45 It's about forty-five minutes. 45 minutes. So. For that one cup. For that one. And that's not eight ounces. No. We're not, not even right. talking eight ounces. No. We're talking so, four So maybe ounces. we should add lots of ice. <laughs> okay. To, let it melt, melt out a little bit. To, di to dilute it. Or you could just do shots. Shots is always less calories because uh, it's the juice yeah. okay. and the soda that's inside of it. Okay. Okay. So if we are bourbon or a vodka drink, a tequila has 67 calories. Vodka has 97 calories. Well, so, you, so doing that straight as opposed to adding sodas and adding other juices, juices yeah. and so forth to it will keep the calories down. And, and your sugar down. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, that's, right. sugar, that's sugar alcohol, which is different. And that doesn't impact on the uh, blood sugar like uh, other um, things like refined sugars and things, but uh -huh. you know, you talk about this when you look at people on the Atkins diet and those other kinds of low carb diets. There's certain different types of carbohydrates, you know, and there if it's sugar alcohol, by definition, it doesn't impact on your blood glucose levels like other things. Now, I'm not telling everybody go out and drink a whole. <laughs> Don't misunderstand. Get me in trouble. But uh, you know, but when you look at what impacts, you know, what happens is with those drinks. Uh, you, because you put the juices and the sodas, that's where all the refined sugars come okay. in that uh, creates all the extra calories it's going to put. We the got a question on. on Facebook. They want to know, is it true that drinking a cup of warm water in the morning helps speed up metabolism? I never heard that one before. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Melody? <laughs> well, that's, that's what I practice. Actually, I practice warm water, warm water with um, lemon. Let me tell you something. My mother is 81 years old, and she has done that every day of her life. And if you see her, you would never right. know. Yeah. And <laughs> I met, a, I met a, a, a young lady who was 101, and that's what she did. Before she ate, Yes, she had in, for, in the morning. Warm, warm water and lemon. Yeah. I just don't know that it actually does what this question is. And it very well could, but I've not heard that before, that it increases metabolism. But well, like anything else, if you 
anything you put in your belly with no calories in it, you know, <laughs> you're not going to want to eat as much after that, you right. know, Which to be honest point. with you. So that thing, that may be it as well. 440-2665 or 1-800-940-2240 are the numbers to call to join our conversation. Tell us what you're doing to curb your appetite during this holiday season or what are some of the tips that you do to make sure that you don't overeat or overdrink during this holiday time. 440-2665 or 1-800-940-2240. So we have another question from Facebook. They want to know, Dr. Newby, specifically to you, since you're the cook as well as an uh-huh. exercise <laughs> person. So what are some salt alternatives? Mrs. Dash ain't cutting it. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Trust me. I, I know. Well, you know, it's kind of like, you know, I think it, it depends on what, I, what I'm finding is everybody's an individual. And, uh, you know, what may appeal to one person may not appeal to others. I mean, I've kind of learned I don't use a whole lot of salt anymore. I, I, you know, I'm not going to lie. Salt is good. I mean, let's just call a spade yeah. a spade. <laughs> I mean, salt is good. You know, fat is good. All that stuff is good, but it doesn't mean it's good for us. But I use a lot like garlic and, um, you know, bay leaves and you know, I, I use a lot of seasoning that outside of just salt. And, and to me, it brings the flavor out um, more so with that than I think I even do when I put salt on food. And and what what it boils down to is getting used to doing it different. And, that's and getting where, used to a new taste. Yeah, and it's just, and that's where it becomes difficult because people, you know, think about it, You've been doing this forever. How many years that you've been living um, and you're, you're used to that flavor, but you go to other countries where they don't use this, they're used to not doing it. It's a matter of what you're used to. Melody brought us some wonderful cilantro from her garden, so go. I'm assuming you use a lot of herbs I also. agree. Yeah. Right. Herbs are fantastic. And okay. if you just research what yeah. herbs do, it will, it helps. Like certain turmeric helps with yeah. anti-inflammatory. Um, cilantro does with lowering the obesity and eating the the fats on your system so certain herbs do certain things and it tastes pretty good and you can tell time and everything mm-hmm. and then once you stop using salt and then you get used to it when you go back you yes. realize yeah. you realize yeah. how salt yeah. 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 Right. How salt, yeah even with soda pots you know how you yeah. stop drinking soda then when you Go back. Uh, yeah. You're like, woo. I know. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And we really should get in a better habit anyway of, of, of eating differently, more water, less, uh, you know, the drinks. I know a lot of people say, oh, I don't like the way water tastes. And, and you get a lot of it because it really has no real flavor unless you add things to it. I mean, in terms of like the vitamins and things that people would add. I know a lot of city waters, you know, they add things to it. They try to fluoride and whatever. But, I mean, by definition, we that's what we're supposed to be doing anyway. You know, they always say, throw the ice in there <laughs> and, and just, you know, just and chug it on down. I have a question, though, sure. uh, I want to throw out. When we talked about activity, um, and I think this would be something that people would need to hear. The American Heart Association says we're supposed to be doing at least 30 minutes, five days a week, or some physical activity. From a standpoint of people that, you know, are not familiar as much with, American Heart Association guidelines, but they're just general people that may be out there who may be listening in. What's the recommendation, especially in this time? Because you get in the winter time, what happens? Everybody shuts down. Correct. You know, I mean, I, I, I'm the first one to even admit I love riding a bike, but when it's cold out, I mean, <laughs> I got this internal temperature of fifty by fifty five and less. <laughs> I mean, I, I have I have the best of intentions, but it, I mean, I could go out and my wife laughs at me about this, but I mean, I could go out in a hundred degree weather and ride all day and it doesn't bother me. But man, 55 or less, it's like I I go a block. I'm ready to turn around and go back home. <laughs> it's something about that temperature bothers me. So I have had to learn to adjust like in the office when I go there, I walk up the steps, I walk up the Good. ramp, parking ramp. Uh, versus coming to the elevator and I do that because so I have some activity involved in the winter time because I know I'm not going to go to the gym not with my schedule I mean I'm yeah. getting home now nine ten o'clock most nights so I'm not going I, I'm, I'm not going to lie I mean I have to get my activity during the day and I have to incorporate it but how would the average person handle uh, act how they they don't have a, a gym membership but don't have time to go what would be the recommendation to keep them active you know, where they can still um, maintain a good, healthy lifestyle, but yet not they're not going to the gym every three days a week or whatever. What would be a, rec- a good recommendation for them to say, how can they incorporate it in their day? I mean, I, I say that because you're right. When it's cold outside, you, you barely see anyone outside running. 
unless they're unless straight. Unless they're die, yeah, they're right. diehard, you know, die hard. Yeah. And, and you're looking at them like, wow. <laughs> so um, I I would suggest, and I, like when you're at home and you're watching TV because it's cold. Mm -hmm. So if you watch an hour TV show, you have 15, 20 minutes of commercials. So during those commercials, Stella's is sitting there. Can we do squats? Can we run up the stairs? Can we do sit-ups? Can we do um, planks? So we can do activities during the commercial and then come sit back down. And we finish watching the show. And then so, finish. so that interruption, just even those little chunks, right. makes a difference. Because you're shocking your body because your, your, your muscles are great memory. They know what time you wake up. They knew it. So when you're sitting down and say, well, I'm going to get back up. Your body is like, wait, what are you doing? Oh, I got to burn. Let my metabolism um, kick on. And then boom, it does that. So it's like the dancing. So let's dance. You got 30 seconds to dance. Let's, what, what can I do? Or, or something like that. Or cleaning. When the last time have you reached up to your cabinet and clean that top and move those, um, those glasses? Stretch. Stretching. <laughs> right, right, right. So even stretching is good for your body. It helps remove some of the lactic acid just that's been sitting there. Okay, if you're just joining us, we're talking about avoiding weight gain during the holidays with fitness guru Melody Doughty, 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 <laughs> Doughty and cardiologist and co-host of Another View on Health, Dr. Keith Newby. Join our conversation, 440-2665 or 1-800-940-2240. Tell us what you do in order to avoid overeating during the holidays. Um, we, Someone wants to know, our producer actually wants to know, what are planks? Planks. <laughs> planks. Planks is an exercise that um, stimulates the core in your, your whole body. And what you do is you lay on the floor with your elbows straight and you're on your tippy toes and you're laying straight flat. And you're holding that position. And you hold it for at least 30 seconds. And what, so you're about, you lay it out straight, mm -hmm. tippy toes pointed, yep. toes pointed, or you're on your toes? You're on your toes. And oh, you're on your elbows. And you're on your elbows. Yes. Oh, Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. I think that hurts. No, no, no. That's, that's great. That's great. It's even right. better when you're with a partner because you both, one can be under you. Oh. No, that's a joke. Yeah, I was going to That's a dope show. No, but it, it's, it's great. So you do 30 seconds and then you, you around 15 seconds, you are going to tremble yeah. and maybe uh -huh. scream. And then, but, <laughs> but as time go, you're going to be able to do it for a minute. For a longer time and a longer time. And then time. as time goes, you say, you put a book, you get someone to put a book on your back to strengthen your core. So oh. you just do things in that nature to help it. Yeah. Wow. Okay, listen to this. So for some, some drinks, for example. All right, so Naughty is six ounces of hot buttered rum. All right, that's 130 calories, two grams of fat. And what you could substitute that with is 4.5 ounces of champagne, which is 95 calories and no fat, as an example. Okay. Um, this is just some, some of the tips that people have just to avoid. <laughs> For appetizers, uh, naughty would be two ounces of cheddar. It's 229 calories and 19 grams of fat. It's a lot of fat, yeah. <laughs> but it's so good. Nice would be one <laughs> shrimp cocktail, 34 calories and no fat. Is that doable? What's that with the uh, shrimp cocktail? Yeah, one yeah. shrimp. One shrimp. Can you but see, eat? that's my point. Yeah. Can you, yeah. can you, can you eat chip? one shrimp? Yeah, yeah. Well, exactly. I guess the question is how big is that one shrimp? <laughs> <laughs> so naughty would be one potato latke, which is 207 calories and 12 grams of fat. You could substitute a half a cup of roasted butternut squash, which is 41 calories and zero grams of fat. You know, so you got to. Yeah, I think what, what you end up finding out is. You know, I guess we go back to that point. Everybody's an individual. You know, like I'm not a butternut squash kind of guy, <laughs> but but I love the, I love broccoli. I love spinach. Yeah. I mean, you know, I there there are foods that I really really enjoy that are very low in calories. So you got to find you got to find what yeah, those are. What, what you like. And that, now, of course, you should try things. Now, don't misunderstand because I know sometimes I'm bad with that. But having said that, you find that which you feel you can do just like diets diets you know a lot of people try to mismatch diets and that's why they wonder why it doesn't work because i mean you know you got to stick to a plan find and, one yeah find and one stick and it. stick to the plan but when you try to uh, like the one day they're going to act in the diet the next day they're going to do this you know like a dash diet the next day they're going to do some other kind and they're wondering why they're not getting anywhere because you're not 
getting being consistent with what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So I think if you find what you feel comfortable with, you know, I think, you know, you talk about like weight loss. Um, there was an article. If you, if you go on the Internet and look up uh, like 50 best diets in the U.S. And I know it's U.S. News and World Report. They do this every year. Yeah. And they actually is interesting when you read that because they have they list I think it's usually like thirty some thirty five diets or whatever, and and they do a good synopsis of of each, of each one and and I and I tell people all the time go find that article and look and just and peruse or preview I guess is the word each one of those, and see which one of those you think you could legitimately do. And stick with it. I mean, because a lot of times the patients would ask me, well, what, you know, give me a diet. I'm like, yeah, but I don't know what you like, what you don't like. (laughs) I mean, I could give you a diet, but you may say, I can't do this. You know, I mean, I said, you have to, I said, it really has to be, you have to decide what you feel you can do you know legitimately and stick to it and then that's what you stick with. and incorporate that exercise because right. yeah. it doesn't it's, work if you yeah, don't exactly. exercise you both. With it. yeah, yeah. Diet, i think diet should be a four-letter word that should be banned because <laughs> yeah. uh once once you do the diet and you're like oh i lost that 20 pounds or whatever and then you go back yeah. to the old habits, old habits yeah. so let's nice let's not do diet let's yeah. do um lifestyle life, change lifestyle change, lifestyle change. Yeah. okay one more naughty nice desserts okay one slice of apple pie 411 calories, 10 grams, 19 grams of fat, 4 grams saturated. <laughs> so here's what you substitute that with. Uh, Four dark chocolate dipped strawberries, 166 calories and 9 grams of fat. Hmm, I yeah. could eat either one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> ben joins us from Norfolk. Hi, Ben. You're on the air. Good afternoon, folks. Great show. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you, you see we're having fun up yeah. here <laughs> it's the way to do it is as a yoga instructor one of my favorite ceus was um uh, laughter yoga or laugh a yoga up at yogaville in buckingham virginia i put a semicolon on that to emphasize and support what y'all are saying um yoga can sometimes turn off certain people and especially if myself included we got body image issues uh-huh. but the pra- the practice of posture and the practicing of the breath, which is called asana and pranayama work, was one of the most transformative things for me as resetting my meter to feel when I was getting out of tune with my body. Ah, okay. And, and I'll, you know, I'd put my email out there and refer people out there to say, hey, you know, there are some great yoga teachers who will take their time with you and, and give you the, the time you deserve in your house. So you can be in a private setting, you know, and be able to take those tools and, and, and fine tune the body, you know, and I, particularly that pranayama practice, uh-huh. the mindful practice of uh, fire breath, mm-hmm. which uh, is, is kind of comes and goes with different lineages of yoga, but it can be taught in a mindful way where somebody can start as a novice. And I swear to you, that'll kickstart that, the whole digestive juices and the the posture practice or the asana practice, opening up those nerves and that fascia down there in that belly, and it really, you know, it'll, it'll it can transform. That's so. great, Ben. Tell us your your email address real quick in case people have questions. They're welcome to email me. Um, it is Benjamin C M T, as in Charlie Mike Tango. Benjamin uh-huh. C M T at gmail.com okay thanks so much for the call ben we appreciate that and happy holidays to you peaceful week thank you (laughs) you take care all right dan joins us from norfolk hi dan you're on the air hi how's it going today okay how you doing i'm doing well good um i've been uh starting to all right just gonna say this i'm uh at a new job now i find myself having a lot less time so talking about getting to the gym being difficult i understand that now um (laughs) Welcome to my started, world. <laughs> exactly. Uh, anyway, I started wearing a fitness tracker, kind of track steps and things. And uh-huh. I'm, honestly, I've been a little confused about it because I know they're like, oh, you should get 10,000 steps or something. Right. And I don't have trouble with that. I'm curious, though, if that counts as physical activity, do I need to supplement that somehow? Okay. Go Melody, you want to take you that? Go ahead, well, I think it all depends if you, um, if you are uh, sedentary or what do you do. If you normally sit, um, and then you do 10,000, that helps. Your, your, um, cause like I said, you're doing something that your body's not used to. But if you are an avid walker and you do 10,000 steps, that's nothing. So you need to challenge yourself and maybe say, I'm gonna 12. do 20,000 mm-hmm. and double it up. Cause that's what it is. Cause I easily do 
15 to 20,000 a day. So 20,000 steps a day? Yeah, okay. and I'm tired yeah. when I get home. Yeah. So okay. therefore, to challenge myself, I say I need to do 40 if I don't have time to do the gym. Cause you, because you are, this exercise is individual. So you have to see what do you do. What, what, you work, what works for you might not work for your friend. Gotcha. So you just have, you have to do it like that. Yeah. And that I help you, Dan? Oh, yeah, go ahead. And I tell Keith. people uh-huh. always, walk, you really walk with a purpose, you know, and, and you gauge it up. You know, like say if you if you haven't walked before, start at some level and then say, okay, every couple of weeks I'm increasing by X right. amount. Goals. Like say if you, if yeah, if you're, uh, um, say like you know, me, I'd go, i typically 15 to 20,000 for me a day just because of what I do for a living and I just don't take the elevator anymore. So, um, you know, I purposely and going up steps is a lot more difficult than walking on flat ground. I said, we, I think anybody's gone up steps knows that. So challenge yourself, say, okay, this week or next two weeks, I'm going to do, like I said, if you haven't walked before, don't try to kill yourself starting off the gate. Maybe say go 5,000 steps, see how you do. If you say, oh, that was nothing, then you say, okay, then you need to challenge yourself a little 10. bit more. Go to 10. And every couple of weeks, increase it up by another, you know, couple of like maybe 2,500 steps or 5,000 steps till you get to a goal. And that goal may be whatever you see body changes that are happening. If you're losing weight, you know, you don't necessarily need to push yourself harder if you are actively losing weight. And that's what your goal was. Just trying to stay fit is really goes back to the American Heart Guidelines. 30 minutes a day at least five days a week, some physical activity you should be doing. Okay. Thanks, Dan, for the call. We appreciate it. Anita joins us from Chesapeake. Hi, Anita. You're on the air. Well, my trick is to not drink wine between Monday and Thursday. Because <laughs> it's Thanksgiving for Christmas. Okay. Monday through Thursday, there's no wine. All bets are off on Friday and Saturday, however. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I cut sugar, and cream completely out of my coffee. Oh, have good. a large salad with every meal. Cut the carbs really back because from the 15th of December on, it's all about food. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. And that... my job is physical, so I don't put in a whole lot of extra activity because my job is already a very physical one. Okay. All right. Good tips. Yeah. Yeah. Very, well, good tips. Very, Thank, very good tips. Thanks, right. Anita. We those, appreciate those that. Those cars would get people in trouble. Right. Yeah, that's, a that lot of people, people really think it's the fat. But if you look at, uh, there was a head-to-head trial. This is uh, several years ago talking about low-calorie versus low-carbohydrate diets. And when they compared the two, they felt the amount of weight loss was the same. But the cholesterol profile actually was a lot lower in the low carbohydrate diet group than it was in the low calorie group. So a lot of people are always saying, well, my cholesterol is high. I need to cut back on the fat, but they eat 20 tons of sugar, right. which just negates all that. The because, ice cream. Yeah. Yeah. All these other things that, mm-hmm. uh, and they're thinking that they're actually doing something helpful for themselves, but they're really not. Those carbohydrates is what gets people in trouble. Yes. And there's certain types of carbohydrates. Right. Of right. course, I'm right. talking about refi- you know, the, refined sugars where they go and you know that's what you always hear of is white don't mess with it you know yeah. uh you know and that's like for a reason bread, yeah white breads white sugars because all that they've they've messed with it <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> now our producer lisa got lisa she started substituting vegetable pasta for regular pasta she said it tastes the same yeah, and she thinks that's more helpful. I mean, it very well could be. I mean, I just I look at the labels on it, you know, because that's really what boils down to when you look at it. Because like when you hear the term organic, I always say, "What does that mean?" <laughs> yeah, because you got. I mean, and, and I hate to say it like that, but you really think about it. Is is truly your definition may be different from somebody else's definition. Mm-hmm. So you really need to know what it is that you're concerned. All right. So here, this is why this is really, really important. So. You go out, you have just a little too much to drink. Mm -hmm. You wake up the next morning with that dreaded hangover. What do you do? All I know, you got to ride it. <laughs> I, you know, listen, I hear all these, I, I hear all these hangover remedies. Remedy hangover. I don't think it does anything. I mean, I, when I, I remember, uh, not to tell on myself, but uh, uh, that, that, I think that was when I was younger. I put that younger. I won't, uh-huh. I won't say a time frame. I, I, I did that one time. I had to worst hangover in my life the next day i mean i had a headache that would not go away 
and I went on, and, and that was before the internet came out. So I'm in, <laughs> I'm in the books trying to read up on stuff, and they had all this stuff, war eggs, this, that, and the other. I did all the Tabasco sauce. I mean, it nothing work. I, I just had to ride it out. So if there's something new, tell me. I, well, <laughs> now, according well, to, to an article that I found um, in Fitness Magazine, it says that you should relieve your misery by eating a piece of toast with honey. Greasy foods like fried eggs and sausages will only overtax your irritated digestive system and make it pump out more acid. So honey is an excellent source of fruit source of fructose, a sugar, sugar that research shows may help your body get rid of the alcohol's toxins more quickly. And then they also say take uh, ibuprofen instead of acetaminophen. Yeah, probably that ibuprofen was doing it, but I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I, said, I, I can't say it on that. I know you look at honey. Honey's probably got more calories than any other sugar I've ever seen. You know, it may be healthier, but, but, it's, uh, it's, but natural. it's natural, right? It's a natural sugar. Yeah, I just, it's just when you look at the caloric content, it's high. You know, as I, and I'm not just, I'm not disputing. Don't don't beat me up in here. Uh, I'm not disputing it. I'm just saying I just know that's one of the higher. One, I just don't know if it accomplishes the goal they're saying. That oh, part, okay. I, honestly, I don't know. Okay. I, I, and I, I mean, a lot of things people have these, these, I mean, you know, again, people laugh at me cause I always just nix all these home remedy <laughs> things. Cause I mean, because there's no research to support it. I mean, I'm still, you know, deep down the side as much as I love um, what I do in the way of being a people kind of person, I'm still a scientist, you know, and I have to have data that supports it to, exactly. to, to recommend it to people. I mean, I tell people all the time, listen, cause I get posts coming in the office with like this, basket full of vitamins they got like 800 bottles of vitamins <laughs> i can't get them to take one pill i want to take but they'll take 800 different types of vitamins and i'm like you know do you know how you know this stuff does anything and they always say but it's natural natural i said well but what's natural, natural about a pill i said somebody made that pill that i said if you was eating tree bark in here i'm like okay i'm with you <laughs> exactly i said but that's a pill somebody made that you don't know what's yeah. in it really you know so i said you doing this but you don't really know that that does it. So, so home remedies aren't, aren't your thing, huh? Not my thing. I mean, but it's not, I tell people all the time, I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just uh -huh. saying I can't tell you that it actually does what they say it does. Oh, okay. Because a lot of people do so things that's more grandma, anecdotal. When you talk to your exactly. grandma and she tells you. Oh, yeah. I mean, they go yeah. through that stuff. I'm like, oh, that's nonsense. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I, mean I, I nix all that yeah. stuff. I mean, and I, oh, I just smile, you know, because, you, you know, I'm always respectful. respectful. Yeah. Sure, absolutely. So I just smile and nod my head and I'm like the center myself. I ain't doing none of that stuff. <laughs> so my my question is to Lisa: Is she making her own? Yes, she has pasta? a spiralized spiralizer. I think spiralizer. And she says she cuts her own noodles straight from the raw zucchini. Oh, cool. and, that, and that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So that's, I, that's a really yeah. good. That's that's very good because I was thinking she was going to um, use the the pasta that says veggie. Oh, oh no! She's talking about actually yeah. using vegetables. Right, I substitute my that. pasta. I substitute spaghetti squash for my pasta. Now I've had that, and that is delicious. It that is where where the uh, spaghetti spaghetti squash, because um, you really don't know the difference unless somebody tells you. At yes. least I thought it is. I think I think we have the consumption that um, we have to eat enough so we full, yeah. like yeah. sleepy full. We we're not yeah. content with just eating and feeling great. We have to be. But it's not I, good till full. Till I'm, till let me go <laughs> to sleep. We taught to clean that so, plate. Like, exactly. Yes. <laughs> so we, we got about five minutes left. But but let me uh, let me. Oh man, we are the end of the show already. Left. I know. Can you believe that? Oh. But but here's the thing. So people say, well, it's only this time of the year only comes once a year. That's true. So yeah. if 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 I'm good all year long. You know, can I just go for it at the during the holidays? It goes back to what Melody said earlier. Define good, because <laughs> your definition of good is probably not everybody else's definition of good. And that's really, you know, I tell people all the time that I say when people say things are all right, I try to avoid terms like all right, okay. 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 That's, you know, that's, that's pretty decent. That's pretty good. I mean, because, you know, it's like somebody comes in and, and they'll say, well, my doc says my blood pressure was pretty good. I say, but pretty good compared to what? Yeah. I mean, because what, what it was last time when it was ridiculous, yeah, it's pretty good then, but it's still not normal. Pretty I say, good you know, to a smoker right. yeah, who's yeah, 80. Yeah, exactly. Right. You know, so I say, you know, so I always tell people all the time, define good. Okay. And then that's why, because, I mean, you really are good. That means you're eating below X amount of calories a day. Your activity is X amount, right. you know, per day or X times per week. 
I mean, most people don't really do that. They really don't. Melody, let me ask you a question. People, all these people now have these stand up desks. Does yes. that make a difference? See, you know, we were going. I was going to talk about this earlier. I think stand up desks are great, and also stability balls. You know, instead of sitting in a yeah. chair, uh-huh. they sit in a stability ball because it supports your core. As you're holding your abs, it helps with your posture, and uh-huh. you burn calories. You'd be surprised on how you burn calories by doing just small things. Okay. And it's plus, it's more cognitive because okay. then you really start thinking about yes. it. And I think that's the best part. All right, when we start thinking we're like, "Oh, I shouldn't do that," then we stop. It's like getting uh, burned in the kitchen i'm not gonna yeah. touch that <laughs> so but i mean i think with christmas it's great to live laugh and enjoy one another but can we live laugh enjoy one another and exercise and live healthier can we do that can we have um, initiatives and competitions later so that in january we we'll come back and say girl let's have a competition let's yeah. let's not yes. lose weight yeah. Yeah. because we get stuck on losing weight but can we lose do something about let's call it pinch the inch and see how many inches we all can lose so we can do a compare and contrast because then we realize as more inches we lose the more weight so we're not focusing on the weight we're focusing on the inches ah, so it's okay. different so it's just changing yeah. the mindset it's changing the mindset I mean uh, Weight Watchers got work. us food yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay work. so two minutes left one piece of advice for people as they go through this holiday melody live laugh and exercise and we can get it done just be preventive just and, it's be po- preventive. and it's possible it's possible to do it don't get discouraged it's possible all right that's melody dowdy and she is a fitness guru with uh, norfolk state university and also tidewater community college thank you so much for being with us today Dr. Newby, your piece of advice. Oh, just uh, just go to your doctor. <laughs> <laughs> you make sure you, you, you go to your doctor when you're supposed to go. Um, I mean, because a lot of people would duck and dodge, you know, that scenario, because you really don't know where you are in your life with that. You know, I mean, I'm all down for the uh, joy in your life and, 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 you know, eating. If you want to go for it on Christmas, I mean, I, you never hear a peep out of me on that one. Just make sure that if you do that, that you say, okay, you got to know when to turn it off and, uh, you know, then to get back on your track, you know, and then people just keep putting things off, putting things off. I'm, I love the competition aspect because that That's gets people idea. engaged idea. with exactly. each other. So just if nothing else, make sure you see your doctor at least once a year, at least to do that. And make sure you get your flu shot. And uh, <laughs> the flu's going around this year. Yes, that it is. And, and make sure you get that. And just, and, and again, I did all the enjoy life, but just know how to cut it off. Okay. Dr. Keith Newby, cardiologist, and our my co host on Another View on Health. And we will be right back. I'm with Marcellus, and you all are checking out Another View. Don't go anywhere. Check us out. Well, and welcome back. As a child, Michael Twitty would tell anyone who asked that he wanted to be a writer, teacher, preacher, and a chef. As an adult, he manages to do all four. Our Lisa Godley caught up with this very busy young man as he shared food's incredible narrative about people and survival with audiences visiting Colonial Winsburg. Food is a vehicle for conversation. Food food is a, a means by which we can begin to understand ourselves and neighbors on a much deeper level. Well, I think when it comes to Southern food, one of the biggest misconceptions is that it just came out of nothing. Uh, the reality is, is that Southern food is a result of multiple historical and cultural collisions, particularly between Europe, Africa, and Native America. When it comes to people of African descent, are these extremely powerful notes that food is how we pass in our culture. Food is how we resisted enslavement and oppression. And food is how we showed our agency. It wasn't, it wasn't passive. One of the things that gets me the most concerned is when people refer to African-American vernacular foodways as sort of like what was given to us. No, it's what we created for ourselves and for others. So I think it's incredibly empowering to learn about oh, yeah. um, that tradition from the historic side the way I do here at Colonial Williamsburg. Field peas, black-eyed peas. We think of them as 
something you just eat for good luck on New Year's. Well, it's deeper than that. When I went to Senegal, West Africa, I went to Gore Island, which is where enslaved people were prepared for shipment to the New World, including some of my own ancestors. And the last remaining slave castle, the Maison d'Esclaves, they explained to us that black eyed peas were one of the foods that were given to enslaved Africans, cooked in palm oil to fatten them up. One thing about sweet potatoes is that in the West Indies, anywhere they were boiling sugar, they were a really quick energy food. And when the men would go to the sugar boiling house, their job was to pour the sugar all night long. You know, talking about long ladles, molten hot cane syrup that becomes molasses, and then it becomes fermented into rum, which of course will then cross the ocean by more enslaved people and feed a triangular trade. But what happens is, while they're cooking this, this syrup down all night, they're dumping some of it over top of an iron pot filled with sweet potatoes. What does that sound like to you? It sounds like candy yams. And they, they would eat that to heat them up all night, because they had to be up all night. It was a high energy snack to have that. We, every time you eat candy yams now, I want you to think about an enslaved man in that sugar boiling house all night long, making that dish happen as a, as a means to stay awake. I don't think about food and cooking the way other people do. I think of it in terms of big black ideas. The ultimate is to create something that tastes good. It's not about how much of this or that you put into it or what technique you use. Black cooking is more about flavor. It's about spirit. And I think it's less about gourmet techniques that require a lot of fancy, because we didn't have that. Only thing we had was our, our feeling about the food and feeling about each other. My parents asked me, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, I want to be a writer. I want to be a teacher, I want to be a chef, and I want to be a preacher. For me, all those elements are conjoined. This idea of feeding people as a spiritual exercise, this idea of feeding people as being an educator, this idea of feeding people as creating a text that's edible. All of that to me, it all makes sense. It's all part of one holistic worldview. The secret to the best cooking is trying to find things where everything complements each other. It's about com creating communalism among your ingredients, and that's how you make the food taste good. We call our food soul food. Why? It's the only culinary tradition named after a transcendental quality. It's named after something that transcends life and death. It's not about our nation, it's about our spirit. And that's what makes me like so proud of it. Wow, never think about black eyed peas and sweet potatoes the same way again. If you'd like to see Michael Twitty in action or just hear more from this amazing young man, be sure to tune in to next Friday's episode of Curate. That's Friday, December the 15th at 8.30 p.m. on WHRO TV 15. And we hope you'll try some of the weight control tips we shared on the show today. If you'd like to hear it again or share it with a friend, please visit our website, anotherviewradio.org, and download the podcast. And while you're there, please sign up for our EV newsletter. It's a once a week reminder of upcoming shows. Next time on Another View, we talk with Adina Brown, author of Make Humanity Great Again. She will inspire you to overlook today's political and social drama and get back to treating each other other with respect. Our theme music was composed and performed by Jay Sennett. Lisa Godley is our show producer. Victor Bowen is our audio engineer and Kamaria Mason answered our phones. I'm Barbara Ham Lee. Thank you so very, very much for listening to Another View.